For a long time, movies featuring Kung Fu have been synonymous with Chinese cinema. But things may have taken a turn in 2019 as one Chinese science fiction film, The Wandering Earth, appeared in global theaters, grossing over 650 million US dollars worldwide. As of October the 1st, 2019, it's the third highest earning film in the history of Chinese cinema. Guo Fan, the director of China's smash hit sci fi movie The Wandering Earth, is shooting a TV commercial for a change. This time, he's on the other side of the camera. The world famous cognac brand from France chose Guo Fan to be their spokesperson for a reason his massive success in filmmaking and the global influence that comes with it. The Wandering Earth, a sci-fi blockbuster, is based on the novella of the same title, written in 2000 by Chinese science fiction author and Hugo Award winner Liu Cixin. It's about Earth's migration to a new solar system to escape annihilation. Having made its way to Netflix, The Wandering Earth has a new chance to find a wider audience in addition to its release in the United States, Canada, Australia and New Zealand. But Gore Fan is also working on something else that might excite the fans, a possible sequel to The Wandering Earth. But he says none of it would have been possible without China's real space power today. Only when our country is strong and rejuvenated can we have a shot in sci-fi movies. Because our country's space technology has reached a certain level today, viewers start to believe in what they saw in our movies, including the Chinese astronauts and Chinese spacecrafts. <laughs> Gorfan has been seen as the pioneer of China's heavy industry sci-fi movies. But the four years of filming The Wandering Earth is described by Gorfan as full of tough choices. Over the past four years, we have accumulated more lessons than experience. We especially want to record these lessons and hope that they can be shared. Catching up with Hollywood has long been a collective ambition for the Chinese film industry. 75% of the special effects of The Wandering Earth were completed by domestic teams and 25% by German and Korean teams. It's a story of growing confidence and sophistication among Chinese filmmakers, as well as a learning process across different cultures. We have to find something. We have to find a way to build our own industrial system, from concept to the filming process from formulating a plan to finally implementing it. I think we need to build a whole learning system. Although the costumes were made in New Zealand, the movie still flashed an abundance of originality, deeply based in the Chinese culture, from the aesthetics of the film to storylines and script writing. Nevertheless, Guofan finds the entire project a magical journey that brings everybody together. Now is not the time to be complacent. We need to keep on going, since we still have a long way to go. So I hope that in the future, my team and I could continue to work on the production of sci-fi movies and the improvement of film industrialization.
2019 has been a fruitful year for Guo Fan. His movie is now being dubbed a milestone of China's filmmaking history. But his exploration with different film cultures is far from over. The Wandering Earth is said to have opened a new era in Chinese filmmaking. And as Chinese movies go global, China is also welcoming numerous foreign motion pictures into its own market, allowing global filmmakers to achieve huge earnings. China's fast-growing box office is projected to reach over 12 billion US dollars in 2020, overtaking the United States as the world's largest film market. China, which boasts the largest number of screens and biggest movie audience in the world, has always been a huge and lucrative market for Hollywood. Beyond film, China's cultural interactions with the US have expanded to almost every other sector after the establishment of China-US diplomatic relations in 1979. In 1987, Kentucky Fried Chicken became the first American fast food chain to open a restaurant in China. Today, Yum China, which counts KFC, Pizza Hut and Taco Bell in its stable of brands, has more than 8,000 restaurants in the country. American culture is also notably present in China through contemporary TV shows. Since China opened up its economy in the 1980s, American TV shows have been a way for Chinese people to practice English while also learning about Western pop culture and getting entertained at the same time. When the hit drama series Friends aired in the 1990s and 2000s, it captivated Chinese viewers with its charismatic yet accessible depiction of life for young middle-class Americans. Over the years, pop stars in the US from Elvis and Madonna to Taylor Swift and Maroon 5 have attracted a huge fan base in China. American literature such as works by Hemingway are read by generations of Chinese, young and old. Sporting events such as the NFL, Super Bowl and the NBA games have enjoyed massive viewership in China. In the meantime, Chinese culture has also flourished in the US. Major international cultural events such as the Smithsonian Folklife Festival have brought Chinese customs and traditions to American soil. In 2014, China was featured as a theme country at the festival. Some 120 folk artists from China demonstrated their heritage, creativity and masterful skills on the National Mall in Washington, D.C. As such, cultural collaborations have always remained active between the world's two biggest economies, and they have only grown deeper.